Brooklyn Gilbert for a great presentation. I'm just going to move over to my deck. There we go. All right, you may need to click on my photo at the bottom right just in case. So hello, everyone. My name is Peter Milsom, and I'm the Vice President of, for Strategy for GPM Global. I'd like to take a quick moment and say a special thank you to Paula for all her hard work and leadership in organizing this event, and also for, for all of you who've chosen to spend your valuable time joining in with us today. As Paula mentioned, I am talking to you today from sunny and balmy Ottawa, Ontario, that little spot there. And for those of you who are interested, today is a delightful minus 20 degrees Celsius. And for you winter sports fans, Ottawa is the home of the world's longest natural skating rink. Before we begin, um, I'm sure many of you have seen this cartoon online. Now, my hope with this presentation is that we'll get keep this image in mind, um, just to consider the different perspectives and insights presented, and to keep challenging the status quo of how we perceive and do things, what we're passionately delivering on our goals and objectives. Now, this monstrosity is intended for two reasons. First, to demonstrate that I'm a methodologist. He's reasonably well-versed in many of these methods, frameworks, standards, and processes around change delivery. Also, because I'll be having some fun with a lot of this. Now, the second reason is if you throw all this mumph in a blender and distill it down, you'll get my perspectives for this presentation, which are objectives. For the next 17-ish minutes, I'm excited to have the privilege of talking to you about my observations for those of us involved in change delivery. Now, specifically, the point is that we should refocus from just a project practitioner specific focus to more of a sustainable portfolio management systems uh, focus. Now, I've got a lot of slides. I effectively have to do two slides a minute, so there's lots of information. Now, you will be able to review this later on, okay? The main intention for this is to foster discussions and raise awareness. Now, the outline, uh, this discussion will be organized into four sessions, as outlined below. And to help us keep on track, so that we know where we are, um, you'll recognize the transition when we come to a slightly noticeable green slide. Ouch. For this section, uh, we're going to highlight some of my observations in dealing with executives in the C-suite, which have a direct impact on sustainable change delivery. Now, the main point is that we as sustainable change delivery practitioners and pro professionals we have to be aware of these issues and help the organizations focus on the organization, the big picture, and our collective future. I wonder if you're aware of the story of the boiling frog. Uh, the point is a frog will sit in a pot of tepid water on a stove and allow the water to slowly warm up the boiling point without jumping out. A good friend of mine and colleague was a VP responsible for strategy for a major public company during the internet boom days. Now, his original focus was 20 plus years, but over time it shrunk from 15 to 10 to 5. By the time he realized the executives and shareholders only cared about a couple years to quarters, he realized he had to get out. Now, executives simply do not know if the strategies they are accountable for and which they've invested time, resources, and capital will be successfully delivered. Point being, how confident are you? Now, you've got effectively three options here. Do you feel rich or do you feel lucky? The following slides will represent observations that executives, or the business, have to deal with but are ignored or glossed over. These are critical issues that must be continuously paid attention to and integrated. Now, executives are often aware of the uncertainty of successful projects and are professions less than stellar odds of success. However, executives are coming to realize that throwing the change initiative over the wall to a project manager and walking away is not working. Just a Quick reference here, um, GAPS is coming up with a project sponsor standard uh, soon, and that may help to advise and guide executives. I'm going to go through these slides fairly quickly, but the main point is focusing on value. Now, as critical as this is, it is frequently overlooked. Value is the balance between the satisfaction of needs, or benefits, and the use of resources or expenditure. The simple question is, what is the function being developed worth from the change? to the client or the investor. Oftentimes, the solution is immediately identified without an analysis to identify simpler and cheaper options. 
this is a common simple graphic, but it does point out, make sure that you figure up front what the value is. And here's just a quick outline of what the well-known value management discipline is and the value that it provides. Love this slide. My kids love this, uh, this cartoon. This is a brilliant scene where the dog gets easily distracted by a squirrel. And executives often have the same attribute, as mentioned by the blonde frog. Now, the point is, how clear and quantifiable is the strategic goal and objectives? Now, the business case is, account is the accountability of the business sponsor. How many well-prepared business cases have been developed and continuously evaluated? Now, having a strong understanding of benefits management and business case is key. And there's some fun references there. Another frequent misunderstanding is the difference between output and benefits. Now, there are project managers who believe they are only responsible for outputs, and the business or sponsor is accountable for benefits. Now, though true in principle, we really need to understand and work with the benefits. A few quick definitions here. And the key point being we have to recognize the path from project outputs to benefits. Here's another perspective that is often frequently misunderstood. The key issue is, and again, this is a perspective with not looking at the big picture, executives do not look at the full asset life cycle. Now, one of the key points is that most organizations just focus on the output. Now, there is an argument that 30% of any change initiative is to provide the new output. 70% is the implementation, acceptance, integration, and adoption of the new capability into the outcomes. Now, all of this is still costs, not to mention the O&M and the end-of-life costs. The focus should be on the benefits. Now, if you forget this in several years, the organization will pay the price. And again, as mentioned before, if you don't take into account all of these with your business case, it's going to take a hit. A few more references. Understanding your strategy again, risk management, almost everything to do with sustainability revolves around risk. Now, unfortunately, the phrase that's often used is risk averse. Risk averse. Now, in reality, with many people that are really risk ignorant, as mentioned, having a strong focus on risk management is key around everything, and we have to include that in all of our change delivery. And a few more fun references. Now, key point for this, we're going to finish off this section. Can your organization be trusted to reliably and consistently implement the change investments? Does your organization have the capacity and capability to deliver? So we've gone through where the executive's challenges are and where they're their head is at. Do our modern project management practices support this or make it worse? When Martin Cobb was the CIO for Treasury Board, he came up with what's known as Cobb's Paradox. Uh, Standish Report frequently uh, references this. I like this response to it where traditionally the medicine prescribed by those who understand the problem has generally been rejected by the patient as being too strong. What do we mean by that? We need to consistently explain, contextualize, and educate people on the reasons for the medicine, okay, and why we're doing these things. And making sure that they understand the risks of ignoring or minim minimizing them. And again, sustainability, there is some overhead. This is a pet peeve of mine. We have invested bazillions of dollars in the project management industry. Now, no matter what everyone says, almost all of the responses come back to it's either about the same in terms of the benefits um, or success of projects, slight improvement, slight decline. Main point being, the delta is pretty small. So are we focusing on the right areas? Here's just a few quick observations around models and, and methods. Um, all models are wrong, some models are useful. Project management processes and methods could be included for that as well. What's often the case is professionals, practitioners,
do a color by numbers focus as opposed to realizing that a key component of all of this is the understanding that you have to tailor to the current situation and use experience and common sense. Flaws in current project management theory. This is a fun presentation I saw in China a month ago and the point of it was is project management a subset of production management and is that the right focus? Now we'll go through this fairly quickly but the key point being Though process is vital for ops, assuming continuous improvement, it needs to be dealt with differently with project management. Now, if you take this into account, project management, and you look at where it comes from, the basis of production management, Taylor, Schuert, and Ford, these objectives look fairly similar from a project management perspective. And if you look at the Iron Triangle, a lot of this is based on factory-based manufacturing theory, and is that correct for project management? And just an observation, would you define this as the project management transformation process or factory-based? And once again, is that appropriate? This is another pet peeve of mine. This is the traditional focus of project management in the West. Okay, Now, we've started to highlight some issues with this. The next phase is progressive. So successive PM practitioners focusing on time, cost, quality, scope, and benefits. Now, where the industry is going, though, is exceptional PM professionals also take into account the triple constraint. And the key question is, how can we get organizations to facilitate this? Now, the next section is going to focus on perspectives of change delivery. And I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. It's a fun quote, the main point being, don't just focus on projects. We have to take into account other disciplines within change delivery. Now, here are some disciplines. Um, we've emphasized the importance of this in other areas. The question comes down to, how do we integrate all of this efficiently and effectively for successful, sustainable change delivery? Now, this is another pet peeve of mine. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, many people feel that this is the normal career progression for project managers. I would argue that this is wrong. <laughs> Barely 1% of our community can actually do this or transition this way. Learned recently, if we focus on the project controls and risk as the basis, there are other options besides just going towards project management. And I will just point out that when we were at the UN Global Compact session in New York last month, cost and schedule engineers in parts of Europe can command per diems of 2,000 plus euros pounds a day because they're in demand. There are others. Now, what this shows is the governance and management systems. It provides a lot, and I'm not going to go through this in detail, but the point being the organization, not just the projects, not just the project manager, needs to have these support systems and governance in place. Here's another description for the support structures. Now, these are just examples that are provided, but the point being, can your organization actually implement or support successful change delivery? Now, the last section is going to pull all of these observations together. So, fairly simple diagram, highlight the key foundational components for the organization. In order to support that, as mentioned, you need the governance and the management systems. Now, we have projects within the organization, but the question is, how are these coordinated, supported, dealt with? The key to that is portfolio management. Portfolio management can integrate all of these change delivery disciplines and effectively act as the secret decoder ring between the executives and operations and facilitate the successful sustainability for change delivery. Last section. Now, in order to integrate all of these observations and to deal with the sustainability elements outlined here, portfolio management is the best option to invest in.
So we've discussed a number of things, value management, benefits management, risk management, um, business case, uh, taking the asset lifecycle perspective. We've got all of these areas, but they also have to be integrated with the sustainability elements. Now, the best way to integrate all of this, to address it, to communicate it, to understand it, is portfolio management. Now, what do we mean by portfolio management? It, effectively, it's the facilitator for change within the business. Now, the key point is portfolio management assists both the executive and operations to ask the right questions, get the right information, communicate, and provide decision support guidance. Now, I've borrowed this slide um, from a model that I particularly like, which is the management of portfolios. This slide highlights the cycles that are involved. I like this one because it shows where portfolio fits and what the touch points are. particularly like this as an example, one of the things the portfolio can do is ensure that the projects that are presented and which have done the proper analysis, the value management, the risk management, the benefits management, the business case, to make sure that it aligns to the strategic objectives and to deliver the benefits that are required. This is another fun slide, again, borrowed from management of portfolios. Again, the key point is portfolio management helps collect the right information information that's needed to guide the executives and the operations to focus on the right areas and invest the, the time, money, resources to move forward. So summary. Now the objective, and I'll just read this out, was to illustrate why a project management process focus may not yield the organizational success and why if you focus or pay attention to more of a sustainable portfolio management systems focus, it will yield organizational success. Now, there's a lot of different perspectives. There's a lot of different areas to focus on. But as change delivery practitioners, professionals, we need to be aware of these points. We need to help support and guide. Our, our focus is not just the project. We have to look outside the box and take into account the organization, the long-term strategies, the asset life cycle, and to provide the guidance to our peers and stakeholders so that we get the sustainable change delivery benefits and products that are expected. So again, the topics that we addressed, the executive's uncertainty, their perspective, challenges with modern project management, issues with that, just some high-level perspectives on the overall change delivery, how we have to tie into it, and the benefits of focusing and supporting portfolio management as a point to guide this forward. Thank you very much. There is your contact information. Um, thank you, everyone, for the privilege to present to all of you. Now, next, I'd like to turn this over to Monica to continue on with a case study in sustainability.